Do you want to put one like my front door? I don't know. <laughs> it's just gonna ask you a couple questions. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Someone gets like a cup of water inside so after they grab the cup of water. Like, oh, just a few questions for you. Yeah, just uh, you don't mind. Just choose one of these here. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to Back of the Envelope. Um, I realize this episode is like a day or two late, depending on when I get this up. Maybe if I uh, if I bog, it'll be a a, a little. Maybe it'll, this will be like multiple days late. Um, maybe it's next. and I had to. Yeah, we, we had to find some. There's there's a little bit of scheduling issues basically, <laughs> because um, Maceo's yeah. it, not as you can see he's not in his normal place. He's down in uh, in Zona, the brand new headquarters, and I am at my house. But I'm about to. I'm literally leaving in like an hour. So uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. Um, anyways, we're, we're getting the episode in. Um, today we have a pretty uh, troll episode. At the end of the episode, we're gonna tour our, our brand new five million dollar um, office headquarters, whatever you want to call it. Before that, we're gonna talk about uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about tipping culture, and then we're gonna talk about the JBL method because I, I found this new uh, strat that kids are using to make money that I feel like everyone needs to know about. Um, so I think we'll start with with tipping culture. Um, let's say, what are your thoughts on tipping culture recently? How's that? How's that been? Um, I mean. I kind of hate tipping. <laughs> I know it sounds wrong, but like, okay, I like. I feel like tipping should be reserved for exceptional service. I think you should only tip if it's something special. I think you shouldn't be paying a tip mm-hmm. for a service you think is like average or subpar. And I feel like it's really just more of a way for employers to like not pay their workers by forcing tips upon other people. Yeah. Right? Is that that crazy? I mean, yeah. What? That's. I don't, I don't think that's that ridiculous. I mean, I. Th- I think like t- tipping for anything, whether it's like a serious amount of like like service involved, like you said, so like sit down restaurants and stuff like that. But what we've been seeing recently, I think everyone listening to this has probably seen it too, is those goddamn tablets. That this. Oh right, my I'll, god, I'll do dude. It, do <laughs> hey. All right. So um. Your total is this, this, this. All right, so um, this tablet is just going to ask you a couple questions, and that's when you see the options, all right? So you get flipped around, and you see 18, 20, 25% as, as your tipping options. It's crazy, because every single place now, you'll be getting that at, like, a frozen yogurt place. It's like, what? <laughs> I mean, you just sit there. Um, I poured my own yogurt. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, compared to, like, when I went to the U.K., there the price you see when you're purchasing something is actually the price you pay so they all the tax is baked in and they don't tipping isn't a thing there like it's just not there's no you don't do gratuities for even like sit down stuff because the employees just get paid a fair wage so that cost isn't i mean it's sure things might be a little bit more expensive but like not even like it was marginally more expensive mostly because um i was paying a conversion rate but the the employers kind of just like pay the employees there it's kind of a novel idea um but I, it, yeah really um tipping culture here it's it's gotten out of control to the point where people are asking for tips on everything um i think for me i i fold every time not gonna lie <laughs> Like, no, I do too. Like unless I like, have unless I'm in like a terrible mood, like I'm likely to fold. Um and it, the whole way that they're getting to do it now with those those tablets, like the things like Square Pay and Toast have made it so easy to ask for tips. And they're making it so that businesses that wouldn't usually ask for tips or used to just do like the tip jar on the counter or something like that are now it's like why not? Why wouldn't you? It's stupid not to ask for tips. Because it's so easy to get so much extra money just from doing it. Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think is more, more common? Seeing like, I, I feel like now I'm more likely to tip. I feel like some of them are pushing the limit with the whole starting at 18% thing. Yeah, Like right. maybe if it was like <laughs> I mean, 10%, 10, I would do 10% instead of doing no tip. Or like a custom tip of like a dollar or something. But 18%. If if I'm like I was it was the other day when I went to get pizza and the minimum tip was eighteen percent and I just like I can't do it man eighteen percent for a piece of pizza are you kidding me um 
it was like 18, 20, and 25. Some are doing like 20, <laughs> yeah. 25, and 30, which is crazy. Um, was that pizza in my heart? I mean, I or? guess for a sit-down restaurant, that's fine. But even then, like, wasn't 18% the norm like a couple of years ago? Now it's like it's up to 20%. But still, I, I don't know, man. Yeah. Wait, where was that? Was that pizza in my heart? Pleasure pizza. Oh, dude. Okay, because that I pizza in my heart, the tip thing also starts at 18. And there's no no tip button, but there's a custom button. And I was no no tip button. There's no, you can go to custom and you can set it to zero. And I was like in a kind of a bad mood. And I was like, I'm not tipping these guys right now. I press custom, right? And then the thing just starts beeping. The guy comes, he like comes, he walks around, he like looks at it and he's like typing stuff in. And it was like a two minute like encounter with this guy because I didn't want to pay an extra dollar. And I pressed custom. That shit was so embarrassing. There was a line behind me. That is me. so bad. No, that's on them. That's like, not on you, bro. No, I was so, dude, I didn't know what to do. I, like, froze. I literally had no idea what to do. I'm so sorry stand. that had to happen. It was, like, dude, it, like, hurt my soul. I was just standing there. This dude's, like, trying to figure out how to get his little, like, POS system back on. <laughs> that that's is so bad. That's, like, traumatizing, dude. Dude, it's, like, public humiliation. That's, it's, like, oh a my practical gosh. Joker's level, dude. For doing nothing wrong, <laughs> by the way. Nothing. Like, like was, seriously, oh. the whole the whole thing that you have to tip 20% on on everything now i think is just like kind of bizarre it, it really wasn't the norm just like so recently um it, and it, it literally all changed just because of those new pos systems like toast square pay all that stuff that it, like when there was cash this kind of stuff would never happen you know so i don't know yeah. we'll see where it goes i think um at some point there's going to be a little bit of a consumer revolution maybe when more when more and more people are realizing like what what are we doing why are we why are we tipping 20 percent for frozen yogurt um but i think uh, or or maybe people will just always fold but i, th- I, I think people are gonna fold forever they're uh the the businesses they're being a little bit of like an icarus you know i think they're flying too close to the sun right now with the whole starting 18 percent <laughs> thing so it might yeah. come back down to earth with like a 10 15 percent starting option um what okay here's what to do here's the official boat advice all right on on what to do about this whole tipping culture out of control first thing as a consumer don't feel bad about pressing no tip especially if it's something that is not you're not getting like special service from someone if you're buying a slice of pizza like all they needed to do is is put the pizza and, and heat it up for you and give it to you they are getting paid. You have to remember they are getting paid at the end of the day. It's their it's their job. Um, you don't need to feel too much pity on them. I mean, you if you want to, you can tip. If you're in a good mood, of course, tip. But like you have to remember, you are it's like you are not the one paying them for that. Uh, you, you are. You're paying for it in that you're paying for the slice of pizza. If that makes sense. Yeah. I feel like it's gotten to the point where like now if we don't tip, we feel like we're like scamming them because we're not paying them. It's like, no, you are paying them. You're paying them for the pizza and their employer should be paying them. That's how it's always worked. It's just like this yeah, exactly. new tipping culture is messing with our, our psychology. Um, if it's if you're going to like a sit down restaurant or something, yeah, you should tip them. Just just yeah. do it. Yeah, um, no, that's fun. That's like you're getting service from them. They're like refilling your water and all that. So that's more than just like, giving you a slice of pizza or ringing you up for your frozen yogurt or something like that. So, um, but yeah, for everything else, custom tip a dollar or no tip. Don't feel bad about it. Second thing, if you want to really take advantage of this, go get a job <laughs> where yeah. they have those, those, the special point of service systems, because as much as you might feel guilty about it, you're going to make a lot of money. I know like um, people who work at like ice cream shops, like our friend Kian over the summer, his base pay is like seventeen fifty an hour, eighteen dollars an hour. Yeah. During like peak hours, he's making like thirty five bucks because of tips. Like during the the summer shifts, he said on like it's, Memorial Day, he was making like eighty an hour for like a solid three that's, hours. Wow. He said so, there's like a line down the street, and everybody was tipping so much. Basically, if you're gonna get a job as a kid, um, doing something in food service is probably the way to go, because, um. One, you're getting a lot of good experience working with like customers and stuff. I, I feel like it's an experience that is not bad to have at all. 
And two, you're making so much more than the minimum wage you're getting paid. If you go and work in like retail or something, you're literally making, you know, two thirds as much, half as much as these people working in like food service just because of the the tips. It is hard work though. It's like definitely like tiring, but I think other jobs can be too. So that's that's how you, if you really want to take advantage of it, that's how yeah. you do it. But, but we'll see how long this lasts for. You want to put one like my front door? I don't know. Someone knocks and... No, where should where can I where can you put one? <laughs> it's in just house? gonna ask you a couple questions. <laughs> yeah. No, no, someone gets like a cup of water inside and after they grab the cup of water. Oh, just a few questions for you. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Oh, just a few questions. Yeah, just uh you don't mind, just choose one of these here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I lo- next thing I know, I'm gonna be like opening my car door and it's gonna be like, oh, just a few questions for you. <laughs> um yeah. The yeah, BMW we'll in the future. Yeah, no, I, the BMW would definitely would definitely do that. They would. Um, they would charge tips on your heated seats. <laughs> they already do, bro. All right. Um, so yeah, that that's our that th- those are our thoughts on tipping culture. Um, I hope it doesn't last forever. Like, it, hey, it's up to you guys. If we want to start a tipping culture revolution, we have a we have we have an audience here. We can we can put this into motion. Um, before we do that, I I do want to talk about the JBL method. All right, so. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good transition right what is this um, yeah i it's okay what make it take a guess take a guess what do you think the jbl method is Monsieur? i feel like it's going to do with the speaker is it not is it the speaker the, yeah it does it does have to do with the speaker um like reselling them or no no you do buy and return them do you your first one is, was closer all right it, it's it's essentially them? reselling JBLs. Buy and returning them. I don't know. There might be an ARB opportunity there. I don't know. That's what I'm um, saying. There's but the there. JBL method is this thing that I've seen on TikTok, okay? Kids are posting about the JBL method. How you can make a ton reselling speakers, all right? So, you know, we just got out of school. We're heading into the summer months. This is actually something that you probably wanted to do before you got out of school. But, I mean, hey, this will continue all the way throughout whenever. Um, what kids were doing is they're getting in contact with suppliers that make very close one-to-one reps of jbl speakers all right so maybe even getting in contact with the supplier that makes jbl speakers and stuff like that and what they're saying is you know what it's summer everyone needs a jbl speaker so you're getting these one-to-one reps and you're reselling them at school or just to kids around town for you know a little bit below what normal pricing is for a jbl speaker i'd say two-thirds of the price or something so then, I mean, what, you're getting these reps from your, your supplier for like, you know, one fifth the price of, of a normal JBL speaker and you're selling them for two thirds the price or something like that. And all of a sudden you're making that extra money from, from reselling them. And now the next big thing is feel like, you know what, JBL method's done. All right, all right we, we got to hop off the JBL method. We got to hop onto the AirPods method. So people are going back oh, no. and forth between these. I think it's a little bit of a cycle. Like when you get to the summer months, people say, now we got to go back to JBL method. And then during winter months, maybe it's like, oh, we have to, you know, do the AirPods method. But the AirPods method, same thing. Get in contact with a supplier who makes very close one-to-one reps and then sell them to kids at school for below market price. The thing that's unclear to me is if they tell them that they're reps. Like, I feel like they don't. I, I think you, you I don't. feel like they don't. I feel like they definitely no. don't. But I feel like, like that's, yeah. Um, hey, if they're close enough and they never notice, I mean, what's the difference, I guess? <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I guess so. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, if you go on TikTok, search up JBL method and you'll see like a 12 year old who like just got finished playing Fortnite with his buddies explaining how to resell JBL sm- uh, speakers. And then he goes and like spreads a thing of like hundreds and stuff. It's, it's pretty funny. That's the new opportunity, bro. The team method. New opportunity alert. <laughs> Isn't the Timu method before? No. It's Timu is like it's like it's AliExpress. Oh like wait, wait, wait. I think for I, everything. Yeah, I've seen like the app Timu. Yeah, no. It, it, it's is you you give out referral codes if you have like a hundred people sign up. You make commissions off of everything they buy off of Timu, and so people just like huh. mass send out these Timu links. It's so Timu is like Wish, right? It's like Wish. It's literally Wish. It, it's nothing different. And everything's like the same quality. It's, it's, like it's all the same. It's quite shop yeah. in China and they just yeah. ship it no, over. It's, it's the same thing. 
it's just yeah i've just seen all their ads with yeah it's wish foot orange um i've seen all their apps from the like the oh we're giving out a seven dollar nintendo switch or something like that yep yeah those only do like people buy them with a referral code you get like a dollar i think your referral code gives you a free item then you have to pay like 18 dollars shipping and then that's the true. person gets a, and the person gets a cut of <clears throat> something from there and then so on. is the switch thing real it was i think i saw no. they were doing like 10 giveaways a day it's just really hard to get them it's really hard to win right probably that's probably part of the team method i, I don't i, need to I mean more giving first i mean <laughs> giving 10 switches away every day is no big deal for them that doesn't cost for anything. like a billion dollar com- or actually for not a billion, billion dollar company's overhead so yeah, it's, yeah i think that's real it's just they only do 10 a day <laughs> Um, yeah, it's only ten for probably like millions of for millions of users. Yeah, um, yeah. I haven't I haven't installed the app. I don't think I'm going to. Yeah, probably not. Did you? No, no. I've just seen okay. TikToks of it. But the team I looked it up one time, but I never went on the app. No. Yeah. So, um, yeah. That's the <laughs> that's that's the JBL method. I don't know. Um, beware if. If you see a kid at, at your school trying to sell you JBL speakers or AirPods, they're probably reps. I don't know <laughs> bro, I really want to see someone that, doing that at our school now. <laughs> it's going to happen, bro. No, I, no, someone, no, hey, anyone goes them? to our school and is listening to this podcast, just please do the JBL method. That'd be so funny. Yo, um, hear me out, hear me out. Ray-Ban's method. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, that's actually valid. I'm, I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> that is... Wow, that is one of the better ideas that has come out of this podcast, not going to lie. Right? Come on. Ray Ban's method. I don't, I think it's self-explanatory. Someone get on that, like, ASAP. Maybe we will, Mr. <laughs> That's our little, summer project. L- little boat, boat, boat sunglasses. No, they're, 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 just call them Ray Ban's. Yeah, no, the Ray Ban's method would work exceptionally well. Yo, That's boat like sunglasses serious. would go crazy, Be- though. Yeah, they would. Because, like, boat? <laughs> the, yeah. Ooh. Hey, boys, let it... Hey, let all us right. know. Let us know. <laughs> um, all right. I think I think we've gotten to the point where it's it's time for a little a little tour. Mateo. tour. You think all so? Right. Um, so sure hey, for those phone. who don't know, yeah, I'm going to switch his phone. I'll, I'll explain. Uh, for those who don't know, um, after the rebrand, um, every the results have just been amazing, and we actually made you know like close to 30 million dollars immediately after the the teen finance the boat rebrand and what we did with five million dollars of that is we bought a new office down in arizona so maceo's down there working at it right now getting everything set up um this new office is it's huge we have a giant warehouse um where we can record podcasts it's just like we just sit in the middle of the warehouse and record podcasts you might think oh that's that's not good for sound quality there's all the echo and that's where the 16 offices come into play. So we just go into a different office depending on on our mood, how we um, feel, you know. Yeah, how we how we feel. And eventually the idea is that we with um the new AI cloning technologies, we make a ton of different salmon maseos and each one of us goes in one of the 16 offices and then um from there we can just, you know, be pumping out 16 times as much content. You know, all written by AI with the AI Sam and Maceo's delivering the content. So it's just a way to scale back of the envelope. The good thing for you guys is that you're going to be getting an episode. Out. Eventually, once we scale this and we fill the entire warehouse with just like cubicles of Sam and Maceo's recording podcasts, we're getting episodes out like every minute, dude. Like every 60 seconds, a brand new back. You won't even be able to like because we keep uploading them every minute and each episode is 40 minutes long. You're not going to be able to listen to all of them. You're just going to be overloaded. <laughs> With, with back it's of the envelope not content. humanly possible yeah so um it's, it's gonna be fire um yeah so it's gonna okay. be should i run on my phone then i don't yeah do i do, do i go landscape or portrait i probably land i i i guess actually no i don't know riverside will figure it out for you right i guess this the in in the riverside thing since we split the screen in half like probably go portrait right just port like, yeah. Probably. Okay, I'm joining. Fire. All right. Oh, you guys we'll are about to computer see. Before the echo happens. Okay. <laughs> okay. Transfer. All right, here we go. All right. Okay. Okay.
So hey, here's yo, my I'm here's my office. I'm working in as of okay. Now. Just a desk in the Pretty middle nice. of the room. Just I love it. Just a desk. It. Right. We got a backwards whiteboard. Uh, some nice palm trees. Big parking lot with like sixty parking spaces. Um, oh, for all the AI sim sales. Yeah, exactly. We all drive different cars. Um, get my dad's on the call. Um, okay, here's a here's one of the offices we have in here. It's a, a storage closet right now. This was supposed to be the. I was to put the pod in here, but then I didn't. Oh. Oh, uh-huh. is that the is that the pod closet you were talking about? Uh, it was it was one of these two. Fire. Another dark room. A little little window. Fire. <laughs> yeah. There's another office. This this could be a pod studio too. I like nice. It. Has too many windows though. Um, look down here. It's uh like the kind of main area. It's not furnished. It's the only thing it's building so far. But you know we got. This was technically the pods. Dude. This is the original one. So it's a dark closet. Oh, that, that is goes super that is far it. back. But it's got to yeah. have good sound quality for sure. It does. Yeah, there's carpet and everything. Dope. Um, here's another office. See if the door's open. It is. Another huge office. <laughs> and there were more of these and you guys demoed them? Yeah, there's a bunch more. There's still more of that. There's another office. We got a another office. <laughs> We have it's my shocky, another office right here. <laughs> we have oh, this one's locked actually. I can't get in this one, but in your mind, in spirit, it's another office. Uh, here's bathrooms. Here's like a little unfinished. Like, Wait, you, what? What area. kind of water fountains are this? Is this the the LK? <laughs> what are those called? Um, yeah, LK. Yeah. Um, it's pretty great. It tastes good. It's cold. Dude. Yeah, dude, you got, you, you got the LK Easy Series Easy S8L, dude. That's <laughs> my favorite chilled. one. They're Those chilled. They're really sick, nice. dude. Yeah. Actually, the best. Um, the Easy SL, S8L. There's a company here before us. So there's, okay, there's cabinets fine. left over from the old cabinet company. Uh, there's people in here. Oh, okay, no, we're good. Oh, yeah, here's the <laughs> warehouse. <laughs> oh, damn. Um, so there's a bunch of furniture that we bought from a, a failing company. Oh. Um, yeah. Got a bunch of stuff like this. We got some Herman Millers over there. Um, Dude, take one home. Replace your uh, your <laughs> server your room secret in lab chair. It's, it's Wait, too I want cold to see the gone. server room. Is that like a little Linus Tech Tips area? Yeah, it's not. I need to build it out. It's not, are you gonna do that? Uh, server. Um, are, are you do? Are you the one building out the server room? Maybe, but none of the, the someone cut all the cables, so all those are useless. No way. <laughs> Yeah. But dude, you could actually do it. It's literally just packet tracer IRL. Yeah. Also, our neighbors are a CBD Maseo. company. Maseo, you can go home and you can practice packet tracer on the Apple Vision Pro and like true, practice true. like plugging the back. and then you could come back here and do it. Yeah. Uh, the, the people right next to us are a CBD and THC company. So they give no us like way. massive hook you crates up? of CBD products. Yeah. Like literally, these are all different products. There's more and there's another room of these. Dude, the CBD method. Holy. Dude, what? <laughs> <The> CBD method. <laughs> Nah, yeah. bring some home for sure. Um, so yeah, here's just a bunch of this stuff. We're putting in overhead cranes up here. So no way. It's going to be pretty gnarly on sliding rails. We're actually, the rails right now. Here's more just of our assortment of stuff. We got a bunch of pressure washers, different cutting utensils. Um, here's the rails for the overhead crane. <laughs> you know, like so much heavy steel. Uh, Tight. What is that? It's, it's a C- metal cutter. Oh, metal cutter. CNC? Yeah, same, same with this also, CNC. Dang. Um, Skyjack. I drove this yesterday. It's pretty awesome. Nice. Drifting it? Drifting <laughs> I also it? drove the forklift. The forklift nice. is pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> this is like my favorite view of the building right here. Oh, this, oh, wait, oh, wait. Oh, wow. Because all the way back. Yeah, because there used to be a wall. You can kind of see where the wall used to be. Like, is right that here. where the extra offices were? Yeah, no, but there, a lot of them are actually still here. Yeah, this was all offices before, but a lot of them are still here. Are those here. all offices on the side there? Yeah, these are all offices. Dude, no way. So, uh, this is right here. This actually has the flooring done in it. It's, it's a little scary in here, though, because there's no window. But Yeah, it is scary. It's all right. This is uh, the storage. Just, like, construction utensils so far. Uh, Dude, so, is no one going to have to share an office, gonna... at least for the start? Is no one going to have to share an office at least for the start? Yeah, not for a while. I don't, I'm not going to go walk too close to there. They're on calls. But um, <laughs> oh, there's another, another set of bathrooms. There's, you know, five bathrooms in here. 
fire. Um, yeah, you know, it's just, it's a huge building. <laughs> Monsieur, are there any women at JAGCO? No. <laughs> no, I use the women's bathroom. Just because it's nice. <laughs> this is, I like this office, actually. This one's nice. It has a, has a window coming out here. Fire. Um, yeah, then I'll stop in the conference room. It's right here, except for there's, like, people working in there. So I'm going to not talk too much. But, I know it's empty. Okay, it's unfinished. They're still putting stuff up. Oh, it looks nice. Changing the lights and stuff. They're going to put a big TV, like, whiteboards, all that stuff out. Yeah, yeah. Get one of those, like, smart board things that we have at school. But, like... Yeah, we were looking at that. <laughs> um, here's the kitchen. I mean, it's nothing really much yet. It's not really finished. And, um... I guess just the pantry, right? We're going to stock this all up with just, like, snacks. <laughs> it's going to be pretty sweet. Tech. That's the big the big vision for it. But um, that pretty much concludes the tour because I'm not going to go walk into the occupied offices. But, uh, yeah. For, for those who didn't get the memo, um, this is Maceo's dad's company, Jagco, formerly known as ArcX, but... Did a little corporate takeover and now it's his company. No. <laughs> um, yep. Arkex Canada was like failing. So it was just the US branch that Moseo's dad had. So welcome to Jagco. If you ever need a. Oh, uh, office dog. No way. Yeah. <laughs> like actually? Or is it someone's dog? No, it's, it's someone's dog, but he, he like basically lives here with us. <laughs> <Hangs out. laughs> he just hangs out all day. Dope. He just nip a little bit though. So, okay. That's a huge parking lot. It actually looks nice. Right. Yeah, so all these like all these spots that are darker are ours. Those, those are the neighbors, but it's these people are parked in our spots. But whatever. I would go and tow them. Repo all of them, right? They're your cars now. <laughs> they put repo, it on your repo. property. I think they're giving it to you, man. And here, oh, here was my stew. For oh yeah, a little setup. Look at look at the mic setup. Show how scuff this is, dude. Okay, look, look. It's it's balanced. <laughs> so if bad. I sound a little weird in that episode, that's why. <laughs> but, well, um, yeah, that was that. Hey, Monsieur, plug plug Jaco. Hey, if you guys ever need a uh, any industrial uh, solutions, so hit us up. Industrial Robotics, solutions, artificial automated. intelligence, we do it all. They do it all, man. They're the <laughs> what are you? You're the solutions company, man. The solutions company. Jaco.co. Everyone, go check it out. If you ever need a um an automated assembly line, any industrial solutions, Jaco is the place to go um that's us yeah I can't turn my camera around i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> are you gonna be down there for like a while like every summer now or what uh probably yeah i'm coming back on monday but i'll probably come back down for fourth of july and stuff so are you gonna go to school in arizona or are you not not oh uh, no i'm not i'm not that committed to this <laughs> <laughs> i feel like it's, i think like i should make my own path you know yeah no Wait, it looks a CBD building right across over there <laughs> the, the green one can you give me the address real quick? Hmm? Huh? That's awesome, <laughs> dude. <laughs> um, yeah, so, so that that's that's the new office, everyone. Um, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys All enjoyed. Right. Um, mark your calendars for next week. Uh, we it's. Uh, I'm not gonna make any promises because we don't know exactly what episode we're doing next week. But they're. I'm not gonna say anything. Okay. It's gonna if be there's really a guest, it'll be a surprise. Not anymore, because I just said that. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we'll see you guys next week. Um, that's it. Boat out. Let me say, do, can, do you want right. to like, eat the camera or something? Yeah. Oh. Woo!